By age 23, Bart Elisha had captured the imagination of the South African horse racing public. He was the jockey who always rode to win. The youngest of nine siblings, the boy from Mayfair had twice been awarded Springbok colours. In 1986, in a thrilling finish, he beat home the odds-on favourite to take the Durban July handicap on Occult. Occult in full zone, but the transfer rider, Barty Leach has done it on Occult. Riding the crest of the wave in 1987, he caught the eye of Hong Kong trainer Brian Ping Chi Can. But Flying Dancer in front, a length from AOK, -OK, coming home hard on the rails. Flying Dancer's won the big one, boy, two lengths AOK. -OK. In 1988, Barty Leisha became the first South African jockey to win an international jockey championship. Dethroning the legendary Tony Cruz, Barty took the Hong Kong Jockey Championship for 1988. Easier said than done, this historic achievement took every ounce of skill and determination from the young South African. Yeah, it happened for me. It always me putting my mind to it, thinking that I couldn't let the country down. Everybody believes that South Africa is like second or third rate. I said, we're not. I'll show you we're not. So I did it. I did it for really for South Africa to show them that we can do it. Brian Khan, we wanted him to come and ride for him. We went down with him. Uh, it was a very new ground. He gave Barty good rides. At an early point in time, there was no time to waste in Hong Kong. And uh, for five weeks, six weeks, not one winner, second, third, and it was very demoralizing for Barty, but he boxed on. In his corner, the Leisha family, making sure that little brother Barty was never alone in this new and foreign environment. And when it came time for the brothers to return to South Africa, cousin Eblen David put his hand up. He was really wonderful. He spent several months with Barty there until the end of the season, and it, it was the support structure which which I believe uh, that he also assisted with, which helped Barty to, to achieve that goal, yeah, and I'm very grateful to him. We always will be grateful to him, yeah. And then the horse racing started getting excited. He started winning two, three races a meeting. One race, I think he took five in, uh, in the meeting. And the excitement, the jubilation, the, the thousands and thousands of people that were there every race meeting. Clap from Mystic with the two leaders. Hand clap about a half length from Mystic who can't pick him up. And Brian Khan lands another trophy race. Hand clap by a two. He was more popular than the Beatles in Hong Kong. In the three months that I was there, or the four months I was there, he was more popular than the Beatles. We used to walk down the street. Mr. Loishin, Loishin, the, 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 the crowds. That's how popular Barty was with the people. He was the people's jockey. He excelled there and there was no doubt about the fact that he was going to win over the public over there. And many people have Barty Leach to thank for opening the way for South African jockeys. I mean, Basil Marcus followed soon afterwards. And then Dougie White followed soon after that, and then Felix Goodsee went over, Anton Marcus had a stint over there. The next season, he uh, dethroned uh, uh, Tony Cruz. Tony Cruz was six times champion, consecutive champion in Hong Kong. He dethroned him, and uh, yeah, then Barty became the new champion there. First South African to become a champion abroad. And then Fortune Wheel, Leisha punches luck down to the lead, draws clear and wins it a length and a half flying colour. He put colour. South Africa back on the map. He was a wonderful ambassador for our country. <laughs> the first South African to be champion jockey outside South Africa. That's saying a lot. Ever. That's, uh, that's history. As in South Africa, in Hong Kong, Barty became known as the jockey who rode for the people. The jockey who always rode to win. Flying dancer racing away, and it's a million dollars, baby, coming up. He that next year in 88 when he became champion, he was flying high, yeah. I think that's when he started peaking in his career, Barty. At the peak of his career in 1989, Barty was well on his way to take the Hong Kong Jockey Championship for the second year running. But it was not to be. On the 25th of March 1989, 
but he took a fall that changed the course of his life and career. In the middle of the race, I mean, you're thinking quick like that. This horse is not too good. No, this horse is not too good. That was my last thought in the race. Bleed in, inhale, blood straight, straight to the lungs. They just drop. Fractional, I don't remember falling, that's how fast it happened. Because I even remember my last thought in the race. I don't remember anything after that. Nothing. When the news came through, we were devastated. We were devastated. We couldn't believe it that he was under intensive care, having major head operations, brain operations. Sitting down with my knees up, sitting on the, the course, the ground with my knees up. And uh, I can, of course, definitely. And then one more came from a furlong beyond. And he ran straight into me. Straight into me. Under my helmet, under my skull cap, I about that far. Cracked right through. This is the end of it, yeah. Neurosurgeon there immediately did a CAT scan, a good quality CAT scan, and uh, he came and said that if he didn't operate that night, Barty would probably be dead by the next morning. Uh, my brother Matthew had only recently uh, qualified as a medical doctor uh, and on the phone uh, he said we must go ahead and they must operate. Uh, we'd leave it to God and to the doctor. Um, yeah, we prayed uh, very, very hard and intensely and uh, the doctor performed a wonderful surgery. They removed a portion of his skull. Uh, his brain actually swelled up to a couple of inches out. Had they not relieved that pressure, his brain would have imploded and he would have certainly died. Um, he spent at least six weeks to two months, not, not in a coma, but he had his brain out there covered in bandages, which had to recede and eventually it did recede back into the, the, the skull and the doctor put uh, the, the portion back with steel staples and then uh, he was discharged eventually and we brought him home. Back home in South Africa, Barty set out on the long, hard road to recovery. I knew that I'm in a bad state, very bad state, uh, physically and mentally. Um, so I didn't. When we went to look at a farm, because I love outdoors, I love it. But I bought the farm, which my, was my investment for the future. I bought horses, I bought 40 horses. Um, I built a track, the best. I don't know how long it took me, but every day I was building. I did the track, built the stables. Well, the groom's quarters, the whole ambition was to, for, a fa for our family, to own, train and ride the winner. Let's do it together. So we did. On the comeback trail, it wasn't long before the Leisha family partnership started producing its fair share of winners. But then, once again, tragedy. A near-fatal motor accident. Truck turning into, so I go to overtake him. The last thing I saw was that big steel black pump coming for me. Airbag doesn't work. Hit me here. This might just work for Barty Leisha and Spot the Joker is gonna win this one. Spot Barty tried to make a comeback on numerous occasions. I had the privilege um, of commentating a couple of his wins. Big round of applause, Barty Leisha. There you go. Great favourite with the fans here. Uh, he came back to riding then, and, and obviously he was sidelined due to, due to his injury and due to the fact that it was very risky for him to continue riding. But um, on the couple of wins that I did call him home, after all those years that I'd been following him as a kid, uh, way, way away from where he was actually riding, um, it, was, it was very pleasurable to call him home. 
defying all odds and showing enormous courage, having cheated death for a second time. Some two years later, Barty Leisha was once again back in the saddle. With older brother Tansy as trainer, Barty enjoyed moments equal to his previous brilliance. But then, amidst triumph and celebration, the 17th of January 1999 brought with it one more tragedy. At Gosforth Park, Barty rode Jungle Dara to victory. During the race, Barty's childhood friend and lifelong colleague, jockey Craig Magua, took a fatal fall. On the outside, Jungle Dara's got to the front close home from Lady Brompton and Dollar Dolls flying late on the outside, but Jungle Dara's won it by half a length from Lady Brompton. I see in the middle of the course, about the 200 or somewhere there, that there's somebody laying down on the course. I said, so I said, the boys, who's that? What's that? So I said, it's Craig. So I said, Craig. And then I hear a helicopter. And I know about when helicopters are out. Even big accidents on the highway have to be serious for, for a helicopter to arrive. Matthew, my brother, is a doctor. He found me about three hours later, saying that it doesn't look good. I said, Matt, ah, I'm not good, he says. Not good at all. Two hours later, my phone rings, my cell rings. Matthew. Yeah, that was the last time I cried. Recovering from yet another setback, but plagued by the cumulative effects of his own near-death misfortunes, Barty Leisha rode for two more years before calling it a day. Losing Barty Leisha from the racing industry was a very, very sad loss. Um, his brother Tansi was a trainer, and uh, I always remember uh, when the Leishas had a runner, or when Barty was riding, that the whole family came and supported him. He had a great family background, and um, it's certainly one of the more charismatic jockeys in the game, certainly one of the most talented jockeys that I believe would have certainly still been riding overseas now. Great to see the champ back. Yeah, honest horse, honest jockey. <clears throat> more than that you don't need, eh? Yes. Well, Other than chances. Many people aspire to be the next Barty Leisha. Certainly jockeys coming up from the Lebanese community. Uh, Derek David, uh, one of the apprentices, aspires to be the next Barty Leisha. Absolutely. My son Derek thinks highly when he watches the videos of Barty. He thinks very, very, very highly. My son Derek David, who is an apprentice. And I think it's all through the the guidance of Barty, which Barty helped him in the beginning, also spoke to him and told him. Still three lengths in front of Sweeping Wind, running him down. Multi Delight, about a half length clear now. Sweeping Wind coming home all over the top of him. Multi Delight, Sweeping Wind. Oh gee, I don't know. He left a big gap in South African racing and in racing as a whole. I think Hong Kong uh, were also poorer uh, for losing a guy like that from the saddle. And it's a pity not to see him in some form or way still being involved, but um, yeah, Barty Leisha will, will always be a name that certainly, from my point of view, will always be in, in lights uh, right the way through my racing career. Arcot on the inside, Modern Man on the outside, Arcot and full zone, but the transfer rider, Barty Leisha has done it on Arcot. I mean, I would do it all again. I love horses, I love outdoors, and I love everything but the falling. The accidents, that is heavy. Uh, to overcome, to come back from all those accidents, that is big time. You've got to have more than, you've got to have more than courage.